Okay. Um, they are chumpers, big time. What they'd like to know is, would you consider being vice president? <laughs> I know. But I think the vice president should have more authority. They should, I don't know. Well, they always said, you know, Dick Cheney was one heartbeat away, one, what, that uh, George Bush was one heartbeat away from the White House, is what they said, and back in the day, but that's a, that's a side joke. So, so can I just, I'll answer their question head on, if I may. And I, I've been to, I've been to events like this, where some of you have come out, not, not in this room, but people in the state. It's happened about three or four times in the last few weeks, where somebody said they came in with that question, and then last, asking whether I would consider Trump as my vice president. And you know what? I said I would, I don't think you would take it. But I think that, I think that what the heart of that question is, and I'll tell you for my part, I can answer this honestly, is this should be about ego. We're in this for the country. It is our duty to this country to do whatever's our best role to serve this country at a moment where we're not working with a lot of time. I mean, if my kids are in high school, before we get this right, I don't think we have a country left. If the interest payments on our national debt become the largest line item in our federal budget, that's about five years from now. I don't think we have a country left. And so I've got questions like this, or would you consider running in 2028 because we love Donald Trump? Any of that works for me. I don't think it works for our country. Because right now... I think Trump needs help. Well, I think our country needs help. And I think that I will take Donald Trump's help. I think I would need help. I said I would take Trump as my advisor, as, as my top advisor during my first year in office, because I want to know where the bodies are buried. When I think about where we are as a country right now. We're in the middle of a war in this country right now. I don't use that word lightly. It is a war between those of us who love this country and a fringe minority who hates this country and wants to see it cease to exist. A war between the permanent state and the everyday citizen, between the Great Reset and the Great Uprising. That is the war that we face in this country right now. And so think about, if you want a general to lead us to victory in that war, the Commander-in-Chief. I think we have to pick somebody who is not currently wounded in that war. If I was 80 years old and had four different wounds and counting, I wouldn't tell you to put me in the role of Commander-in-Chief either. So I think each of us has our role to play. And So my word to you all is, whatever we do, we'll wipe the floor in Congress or the White House or wherever else across this country. That's why I believe I'll have my maximal change that I can make for this country. And it's not going to be some president coming from on high like a messiah to save all of us from the White House. It doesn't work that way. If we're going to be saved, it's going to be because we save ourselves. Every one of us has our role to play. But I believe right now in this moment, we require a president who understands the law and the Constitution and somebody with a brawn to actually see it through and stand for it. Somebody I believe now more than ever with fresh legs. So is that a maybe? That's, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, I'll be very honest, because you guys get to know me. I have a mental defect, and I'll share it with you. <laughs> it, it's, it's, worked as, it's worked in my favor so far. I've built successful businesses, and, and you guys should know that if a president has a mental defect, you deserve to know about it. I'm not a plan B person. I didn't get to where I am by being a plan B person, but I, I couldn't even be one if I tried. I ex I'll tell you what's... True in my heart. I believe we're going to win the Iowa caucus. I believe if I win the Iowa caucus, I'm going to be your next president. I believe if I'm your next president, the things I'm telling you, we're going to get done. The beautiful thing about nearly everything I've told you, we're going to get done. I think everything I've told you, we're going to get done. That I get to do as your president without asking Congress for permission or for forgiveness. And so that's what I'm going to be able to do. And I'll give you my word that Donald Trump, I will use him and rely on him in whatever way. <laughs> is best. He's going to be in his 80s. I want him as an advisor. I want to honor his legacy for this country. But I think if we're in the middle of this war, we're skating on thin ice, I don't think we're going to have a country left unless we have the president who gets this right. And the other thing I would ask you to tell your friends is what I told this group earlier. Were you here earlier, ma'am, or have you been here since the start? I want you to tell them what I said earlier, which is the truth. They're leading us into a trap right now. They want this to be. They don't want, I mean, the, the, the establishment does not want me in this race. They want to get this down between Donald Trump and a puppet. And I, I have a strong sense of who that puppet is. I used to think it was Joe Biden or Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama or whoever. It's actually within our own party. 
They want to get this to be a two-horse race, eliminate Trump this spring, one way or another. Study history. Study global history, study the history of this country, study the history of the last four years, study the history of the last four months. And open your eyes. I, I am not God. I cannot tell you what the future holds, but I can tell you what I see. And I'm asking you to open your eyes with me to see that this system is making clear to us they will not allow this man anywhere near office. And we cannot fall into that trap. There's a trap that's laid for us. Four years ago, it was a man-made pandemic and a tech-rigged election and process leading up to it. What do you think they're going to do this time? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We are walking into that trap, and I am here to make sure, and I'm asking you not to throw away your vote at the Iowa caucus, to actually think ahead, to skate to where the puck is going. You've got the future of America first standing right here. You've got fresh legs. You've got the guy who, and I have a good relationship with Donald Trump. We will honor his legacy more than anybody else. I would go so far as to say, if you want to save Trump and his legacy, but save Trump the man himself, I'm going to ask you to vote for me. And I know that's counterintuitive, but that's what this country requires. And I think that's why I'm going to stay in this, not only through this Iowa caucus, but through the very end. And the very end is at the winning of this election. It's January 2033, after we've led this country after two terms, and we revive who we really are. That's my duty to this country. And I thank you and your friends. Thank you. Well, that's what we sometimes have to do is open our eyes. I didn't think this way about a year ago either, but you go through this process, it opens your eyes. And once you see it, you cannot unsee it. And then the question is, to whom do you owe the obligation? It's not to me and it's not to Trump. It's to this country. It's to our founding fathers. And it's to the next 250 years left that this country still has left in it to make sure it does not end in the next 12 months that we're sitting right in front of. And I think that's what we're facing if we don't get